Assalamu alaikum. I am Shamsuddin from Chennai, India. On social media, there are various Islamic scholars. How do we know which scholars are authentic, conveying the true message of Islam and not misguiding people? Before I respond to your question, I would like to mention a few important points. I would personally like to divide the Muslims into five categories. The first are those people who have no knowledge of Islam or very little knowledge of Islam. And these people, they do not know the things that are fard that are compulsory in Islam and they do not know the things that are haram that are prohibited in Islam. And these people they are not regular as far as practice of Islam is concerned. For example, they are not regular in their Salah. They may be offering Salah only once a week, for example, only on Jummah. They may be offering Salah, for example, only twice in a year on the day of Eid al-Fitr as well as Eid al-Adha. So they are very less as far as their practice is concerned. They are very less practicing Muslims. So this is the first category. The second category are those people who have basic knowledge of Islam. They know most of the things that are haram, that are prohibited in Islam, and they know most of the things that are fard, that are compulsory in Islam. They know the basics of Islam. For example, how to offer salah, how to perform wudu, etc. The third category is the intermediate category. And these people, besides having basic knowledge of Islam, they do a little bit research when they have certain doubts about Islam, when they have certain queries about Islam, when they want to have an answer about some doubt that they have regarding Islam. And they make use of the internet and they make use of Google. They Google their answers. Whether it is right or wrong, that is secondary. But this is their approach. So besides having the basic knowledge of Islam, they try to clarify their doubts over the internet. The fourth category are those who are students of knowledge. And in this category, there are two types of people. The first are those people who have a degree from an Islamic university in an Islamic field. For example, they have a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or a PhD, PhD degree from a reputable Islamic university in an Islamic field. The second type of people are those who do not have a degree from an Islamic university in an Islamic field, but their knowledge of Islam is equal to those people who have a degree from an Islamic university or their knowledge of Islam is better than those people who have a degree from an Islamic university. The fifth category are those people who are scholars. And the scholars, they are those who are a specialist, who are specialist and who are unique, exclusively unique in a particular field. So the fifth category are those people who are scholars and they are specialists in a particular field. They are unique, exclusively unique in a particular field. And the scholars in today's time, they are few in number as compared to the other people. Approximately a few thousand. And the scholars they are those people who are few in number and they are unique and at the same time they are a specialist in a particular field, in an Islamic field for example. And for example, as far as Islam and Christianity is concerned, Sheikh Ahmad Didat, he will be considered a scholar in this particular field as far as Islam and Christianity is concerned. 
He will be considered as a scholar. He's an expert when it comes to Islam and Christianity, when it comes to doing da'wah to the Christians. Similarly, Sheikh bin Baz, he would be considered a scholar as far as fiqh is concerned. He is a scholar. He's unique. He's a specialist in this field. So the fifth category are those people who are scholars. The majority of people among the Muslims, they fall in the third category. That is the intermediate category. So the majority of the Muslims, they fall in the third category that if they have any doubts regarding Islam, they try to clarify their doubts over the internet. And previously this category, that is the intermediate category, it was very small and narrow because there was not much advancement and whenever anyone wanted to find something regarding Islam or wanted to clarify their doubts related to Islam, so they would have to go to a scholar, they would have to read books, they would have to search a lot. In today's time, knowledge is easily accessible. If a person knows how to search for it correctly and even it is available on the internet, if you go to the reputable websites and most of the books are also available, the Islamic books that are available on the internet, the authentic Islamic books. The second largest group is those people who are in the second category. That is those who have basic knowledge of Islam. They know most of the things that are compulsory in Islam as well as they know most of the things that are haram, that are prohibited in Islam. As far as the fourth category is concerned, the category of the students of knowledge, in this category most of the da'is will also be included. Those who stick to the glorious Quran and the authentic teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and those who have enough knowledge about Islam. So most of the da'is would also fall into this category of students of knowledge, those who are involved in the field of conveying the message of Islam to the non-Muslims, to those who are unaware of it, and their knowledge of Islam, it is strong. Even though some of them, they may not have a degree from an Islamic university. So these are the five categories that I have personally divided the Muslims into. Now coming back to your question, that on the internet, on YouTube, etc., there are several scholars who are av available and who are the authentic scholars among them. Most of the scholars who are available on the internet, whether it be on social media, whether it be on YouTube, whether it be on Facebook, whether it be on Instagram, whether it be on other Islamic websites, most of the scholars who are available on the internet, they are scholars who speak the Arabic language. They are Arabic speaking scholars, most of them. You will find very few non-Arabic speaking scholars. So if you know Arabic as a language, it is the best. You have a huge variety and you can refer to a lot of scholars because majority of the scholars who are available on the internet, they are Arabic speaking scholars. So you can refer to the scholars, the authentic scholars, those scholars who stick to the glorious Quran and the authentic teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad peace be upon. This is the most important. And after this, they follow the opinion of the Sahaba, the authentic opinions of the Sahaba. And after that, they follow the opinion of the Tabi'in and then the Atba Tabi'in and then the righteous predecessors. As our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Khayru ummati qarni thumma yalunahum thumma yalunahum. The best generation is my generation, then the one that follows, then the one that follows. Talking about the Sahaba, the Tabi'in and the and the generation after them. Khayru ummati qarni thumma yalunahum and besides looking at the opinion of the scholars and relying on besides looking at the opinion of the Sahaba they also look at the opinion of the Tabi'in and the righteous predecessors and then they also look at the opinion 
of the four a'imma when it comes to issues of fiqh. That is Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. So you should see to it that the scholars that you refer to, they follow this procedure. They stick to the glorious Quran and authentic ahadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They, after that, they follow the opinion of the Sahaba, then the Tabi'in, then the Atba Tabi'in, then the righteous predecessors. And if you do not understand Arabic as a language, so then you can refer to non-Arabic speaking scholars. And as I said earlier, there are very few non-Arabic speaking scholars. So besides these scholars, you can also refer to the Da'is. The Da'is who stick to the glorious Quran and the authentic teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And they follow the opinion, the authentic opinion of the Sahaba. And then they follow the opinion of the Tabin, the Atba Tabin, and the righteous predecessors. And they also follow the opinion of the authentic scholars. For example, these Da'is, when it comes to issues of fiqh, so they rely on the opinion of the authentic scholars. For example, the four Madahib, and then among the contemporary scholars, for example, Sheikh bin Baz, Sheikh Uthaymeen, etc. So it is very important on the internet, you verify the information from, you verify from whom you're taking information. It is very important because in today's time, we find several people who are, are available on the internet. Certain people are authentic scholars. Certain people, they are dais. They are authentic dais. Certain people, they are laymen. Certain people claim to be scholars, but their knowledge of Islam, it is very shallow and it is very weak. So we should not take information that is related to Islam from such people. And at the same time, the information that we are taking about Islam from these scholars, we should see to it that they stick to the glorious Quran and the authentic teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon, and they do not keep changing their opinion based upon the scenario. They do not relax their opinion based upon the scenario, whether it be the scholars, whether it be the dais. For example, you have certain scholars and certain dais, most of them living in the Western countries, they permit things that are haram, things that are clearly prohibited in Islam, they permit it. For example, certain dais say that you can take riba, you can take an educational loan even if it involves in riba. How can a dai say that you can take an educational loan even if it involves in riba? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly says in the glorious Quran and I've said this previously also several times in Surah Al-Baqarah chapter number 2 that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has prohibited riba. It is clearly prohibited and dealing in riba that is impressed. It is not only a sin, but it is a grave major sin. So how can certain dais just give permission to such a thing? I would like to give you another example. You have certain dais and certain contemporary scholars. They say that shaking hands with a woman, it is permitted. Islam clearly prohibits the intermingling with the opposite gender. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that the one who touches a na mehram, that part will burn in hell. That is, if a man touches a woman who is a na mehram, that part will burn in hell. The glorious Quran, the authentic hadith, they are crystal clear that intermingling it is prohibited. You cannot touch a na mehram, you cannot touch a woman who is not your mehram. But yet you have certain dais, certain scholars who come later on, the contemporary scholars, some contemporary dais, perhaps living in the West, and they say, no, no, it is okay to shake hands with women because the society has changed. So you should see too that the scholars, they do not change and switch their opinions based upon the scenario. They stick to the glorious Quran and authentic hadith, and they do not compromise as far as the deen, as far as the religion of Islam is concerned. And besides this, you can also refer to the website islamqa.info. It is, alhamdulillah, a very reputed and a very good source from which you can gain knowledge about Islam. And even if you have some questions that are related to Islam, whether it be fiqh questions, whether it be related to something that is haram, something that is halal, you can very well ask them. And at the same time, if you have a doubt regarding some particular person, 
some da'i or some scholar who's available on the internet. And if you want to know whether this person is a person from whom you can take information related to Islam, you can ask Islam queer regarding this person. You can message them on their website and inshallah they will give you a response. Besides this, you can also ask Sheikh Asim al-Hakim. You can message him privately and you can ask him if you have a doubt or if you want to know regarding some scholar or some dai or some person who's available on the internet can you take information related to islam from him so it is very important that the information that you're taking from any person you should see to it that they stick to the glorious quran and they stick to the authentic teachings of our beloved prophet muhammad peace be upon and as far as the five categories that i mentioned that the first is those people who have no knowledge or very little knowledge of Islam. The second are those people who have basic knowledge of Islam. These two categories, the people who fall into these two categories, they, when they want to know something that is related to fiqh or a fiqh issue, they should follow one of the four madahib, that is the Hanafi, the Maliki, the Shafi, or the Humbly school of thought. They should follow one of these four madahib and they should, and they should stick to it. Or they, should, they can follow the opinion of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah along with op the opinion of Shaykh bin Ba'ah, Shaykh Uthaymeen, etc. So the people in the first two categories, this is what they should do. Follow and stick to the opinion of one of the four schools of thought, thought or the opinion of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah along with Sheikh bin Baz and Sheikh Muhammad bin Salil Uthaymeen. So I hope that answers your question.